Hi right, hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Ben and I am a runner who believes in optimizing your health in order to improve performance. Now I'm a huge fan of low heart rate training. I'm also a strength and conditioning coach. I am a movement practitioner, a plant-based nutritionist and a stress management coach as well. So I like to look at what we can do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to improve ourselves, in order to help improve our performance and whatever we want to do in life. So for right now, I am a week away from my next race and I'm going to be running a half marathon. If you've been following me, it's crunch time now. It's a taper week, which just means I'm decreasing the amount that I'm training to allow my body to heal, to recover. So I'm feeling fresh for race day. So today's video is all about what I eat and the lead up to a race because I do change one or two things when it comes to my nutrition needs based on performance. And what I'll do is I'll explain why I use these things and I'll do these things in order to try and make sure that I'm feeling comfortable for race day and why I like to have a week to allow myself to slowly change into my usual nutritional habits. So we'll just jump into it. So to begin with, what I do every morning and this doesn't change is I will have certain things um, just to help optimize me. And the first thing is being plant-based, you've got to get B12. I use activated B12 just so it's easy to absorb. B12 is a bacteria that lives outside, usually on meat. And because I'm not eating meat, I've got to make sure that I'm taking this. However, here's an important fact. A lot of people who actually do eat meat are still low in B12. So if you are going to ever get blood tests, which I would highly suggest every year or every six months, make sure you're getting B12 tested. Second thing is I use omega-3s. And this is a, but usually people would take fish tablets. I have fish algae, so it's what the fish eats. Um, and this is really good for uh, inflammation, or decreasing inflammation, I should, should say. Brain health and heart health as well. And should after that, I have some electrolytes. So I'm loving this SIS uh, flavor, and it's got B vitamins. So extra B vitamins, really important to have. And it's just an additional boost. So first thing in the morning, you tend to be dehydrated, so try to hydrate yourself as fast as you can. If you don't have electrolytes, just sprinkle a little bit of salt in some water will be another way that you can do this. And then to finish off my little morning routine will be, I have some good green vitality, so it just literally has nearly every green thing ever invented on the planet. It is really, I mean, I'm used to the taste, it takes a while to get used to, but having this is allowing me to make sure that I'm having greens with every meal because I will not eat greens with the foods that I will show you because it'll taste disgusting. So I'll have this as a way to supplement. But apart from that, that is what I do every morning. So usually before on a normal day, uh, my favorite breakfast tends to be oats. I will not eat oats. I will not eat any sort of beans, kind of when it comes to the breakfast that'll lead up of a race. And the reason why it is high in fiber. I want to stay away from fibrous foods first thing in the morning because on race day, if I eat that, the likelihood of me having an accident, or if you don't know what I mean, shitting myself, increases dramatically. So I want to take that away. And by doing that, I'm going to be eating foods which are more starch based, more carbohydrate based, and more fat based. Now for the rest of the day after that, I will eat normally, that's perfectly fine. But for the breakfast on race day and the dinner the night before, I will eat really simple foods in order for me just to feel full and to know that I'm not putting too much stress on my gut. So for my breakfast, my favorite is bagels. So it's just something really simple. Um, it is low in the FODMAP, so it causes less stress in the gut. Good complex carbohydrates. It is really filling. It's around 10 grams of protein in the bagel. And then I'll have that with some peanut butter. Now this is, Fix and Fog, this is a Kiwi brand, absolutely love it. I'll have this on top and then occasionally I'll put some jam on and that would be kind of what I eat every morning to the lead up to the race, just so my stomach is used to it. I will also have a, or a coffee. Yeah, I'll always have a coffee kind of with that, but I'll make sure that I take my supplements first. I'll have some water on top of the electrolyte, so I have around two liters. I'll do some movements, hopefully go with blue as well. And then I'll have a coffee after that. I will never have a coffee without doing that first because having coffee without putting anything into the gut, it's gonna cause your stress hormones to go crazy 
and I don't need that. Life is stressed hard enough as it is, so I like to decrease that. And by using having some fats and having some food in the gut, just means that the caffeine effect will actually not be as, as intense, but you will still get the benefits when it comes to an endurance performance. On top of this, I will also have a protein shake, and usually I would have this after the race, but lead up to race week, what I'll do is I'll usually have the bagel go for a run and then have the protein shake afterwards. Today, I went for a run super early, so I can eat it all together. But in here, I've got chia seeds, really good source of fiber, really good omega-3s as well, which I explained why they're so important before. Got some protein in here. And then from here, I'll have some chocolate milk uh, or some almond milk, and this is fortified, so it's got B12 in, it's got calcium in as well, and it's obviously great, tastes amazing, and something that a lot of people tend to have after training. And then for me, because I'm a bit different, um, I have blueberries and I've got something called a kiwi crush in here, so it's extra fiber. But the thing is, I hate cold food. So what I'll do is I will get up early and I will let this kind of defrost. So this is all frozen and I'll leave this defrost. If I've forgotten, I'll put it in the microwave and blast it for 30 seconds, but I tend just to let it sit, defrost, and then I'll put it into the smoothie. For me, having cold food, especially in winter, is probably one of the worst things for my gut. It actually causes it to stress out even more so. So having it a little bit warmer makes it easier for me to absorb their nutrients, which just means I'm gonna recover faster. So that would be all my breakfast there. I'll put it together so you can see what it all looks like, but I just feel like you don't wanna watch me cook. So uh, give me a couple of minutes and you can see the afters. So here we have it, Gordon Ramsay, eat your heart out. Um, <laughs> what I've got here is the bagel. Um, you can see in particular on this one, I've got a bit carried away with the jam, uh, never mind. Uh, but yet again, good protein, good carbohydrates, low fiber, exactly what I need. So I would, you always have this before race. Once I've finished the race, I have the protein shake, which has got the chia seeds, the berries, the kiwi crush, the protein. Uh, almond milk and I also put a bit of turmeric and black pepper in there just so it adds and increases the anti-inflammatory properties so really good to do and having the turmeric and the black pepper just makes it way more absorbable and you can see here I'll have the coffee so usually first thing in the morning it'll be a glass of water then this and then after my race so after my run I'll have this but because I'm not racing today I'm having it all together and that would be breakfast done so it's lunchtime and it's time for me to eat one of my favorites. As you can hear from my accent, I'm from England and this is something that I was brought up with and I tend to eat it when it's winter because it is very warming, it keeps me satisfied and it's a taste of home as well. And what I'm gonna show you here, I'll show you it first. So that is what we're eating. That's, I'm, usually I wouldn't eat it in this dish but I'm just showing you so I can explain what it is. It is a plant-based shepherd's pie. So I obviously don't eat mints. So what I need to do is try to create my own. And how I do that is I use lentils and I've recently discovered this. So in New Zealand you can get bowl free beef. And in a serving of this, it's 24 grams of protein. There's around seven grams of fat. Um, and as you can see here, it's added with iron, zinc, vitamin D and B12, so pack full of minerals. So I'll make that and I've got vegetables in there. So it'll be peas, broccoli, uh, what else is there? Beans in there as well, um, onion, garlic. And what I'll do is I put a bit of Worcester sauce with some tomato sauce as well and some gravy. I'll make a homemade gravy and I'll mix that all together and cook it through. As I'm doing that, I will boil a sweet potato in New Zealand, it's called Kumra. And then I will just mash that up and put that on the top. And this is the final result. So as you, I'll show you yet again. So quite a big dish. I tend to eat quite a bit at lunch. Um, in this serving alone, there is around, I believe, around 30 to 40 grams of protein. So it's very high in protein. So this is gonna keep me feeling full pretty much throughout the day until I have my mid-afternoon snack, which tends to be a couple of mandarins and a handful of almonds, and then that would be dinner. So lunch, a shepherd's pie, really nutrient dense, and as I say, something to have on these cold days because it's freezing. I'm having to wear my coat inside, that's how cold it is today. So I'm gonna to tuck into this, get to work, and then I'll show you what I have for dinner, and 
I'll let you know now it's going to be a curry. Right, so I just looked back at the video and I didn't really do it justice when you look at the dish. And even here, it's not really doing it justice. But you can see there, there's the sweet potato. And underneath, you've got the vegetables. You've got the mince kind of mixed together. Um, awesome dish. Honestly, give it a try. You will not be disappointed. And I'm already starting to get full, but I will eat all of this because I am starving. Right, guys, so I've just got home from work. It is 8 p.m., so it's a little bit later than what I usually eat at. I'm very hungry, so I'm going to get through this as fast as I can. So what I've got here is a Thai curry. So you can see that there. I just don't want to spell any because I'm really hungry. Uh, and what this is, it is vegetables, frozen vegetables with some tempeh cooked in a Thai paste with coconut milk and a little bit of soy milk. Now usually that would be rice, but we've got the rice, so I'm using some toast. Don't judge me. Um, and that would be the final meal of the day. So what I'll show you next is kind of the nutrient breakdown of everything through Konota. And then from there you'll see if I'm hitting my targets or not. And if you're not used to using a website to kind of track make tracking your nutrient profile i would highly suggest doing it if you are new when it comes to being plant-based hey everyone so it's the day after what i ate yesterday and i'm just going to give you a breakdown of everything that i had and explain why i eat the way i do so as i say as it's leading up to race week it is me changing my nutritional needs just to make sure that i am able to run without having to worry about any other things apart from the actual race itself so you can see here from the pre-run, you can first thing I have is the B12, the good green stuff, the omega threes, and um, some D3 that I forgot to mention that I have, and it's just because it's winter here. Making sure you have an, enough vitamin D is super important when it comes to hormonal health and immune health. To me, it is like a hormone, so it's something that if you are going to get blood tested, please make sure you look to get your vitamin D levels checked as well. And on top of that, there is some electrolytes happen first thing in the morning just to help hydrate me. Now, usually it would be I would run and then post run, I would have the food, but you can see yesterday was a bit different. So I had it all together. So bagels to begin with. So one bagel, uh, some peanut butter, some jam and Brazil nut. Now the Brazil nut, I'll explain why I have one of them a day afterwards. And then alongside that was the smoothie, which is the blueberries, kiwi crush, chia seeds, almond milk, uh, the protein powder, cinnamon, turmeric and black pepper. And remember the turmeric and black pepper is for an anti-inflammatory process, especially just after you've trained. Now from here, my lunch was the shepherd's pie, which was that sun-fed bull-free beef with lentils, sweet potato, some tomato sauce, some Worcestershire sauce, um, some peas, broccoli, greens, and a little bit of gravy. And that's how I made the shepherd's pie. And then a mid-afternoon snack was the mandarin with, two mandarins, sorry, with a handful of almonds. And then for dinner was the Thai curry which had the Thai paste. I couldn't find that on here so I didn't put it in. With the tempeh, coconut milk, uh, mixed vegetables, so frozen vegetables, uh, some soy milk and some bread because there was no rice. So as I scroll down I'm just kind of circling that's how much I ate yesterday so 2,202 calories and if you look here if you break this down it was around 21% came from fats 23% came from protein and around 56% came from carbohydrates. Now, usually that would be more towards 20 to 25% with the protein. It would be 20 to 15% for the fats. And then the remainder would be the carbohydrates. And then on here, it shows how much that I burned. So it shows how much I am burning, kind of sitting around doing nothing and how much I'm burning when it comes to exercise as well. Uh, and the thermic objective that, basically the thermic effect of me eating food as well. So it's just shown how I burn the calories. But based on my needs, I was under, I still needed to eat another 234 calories, but just because I ate so late, that just meant that I had, I couldn't fulfill that. So um, I'll make sure I'll eat more today to, to ensure that I'm not going too far into a deficit. But what I tend to do a couple of days leading to race, um, there is I will eat a little bit less and that's just so I feel a little bit lighter for race day because it's more psychological than anything else but I just don't want to feel particularly heavy on the starting line. Now from here you can see 
uh, the amount of proteins, carbs, and fats I had in grams. So the targets were 128 grams for the protein, 366 grams for the carbohydrates, and 51.5 grams for the fat. For protein, I was able to hit that quite comfortably. I hit 136 grams. Carbohydrates was 320.8 grams, and fat was 54.3 grams. Now, this is the reason why I love this website, and it's because it gives you a little bit more detail about your targets and the aim is you want green circles. Um, it's saying that I've eaten a little bit too much protein where the red circle comes, but for me, when you use a calorie counting website, the RDAs is the recommended daily allowance, and that's the bare minimum. So making sure you are eating, if you are eating a little bit more, that's perfectly fine, but just make sure that you are kind of staying within that realm of not going too crazy when it comes to eating too much above that. So you can see for here, I ate around 88% of my target of carbohydrates. And interestingly, even though I didn't have any fiber before running, I was still able to hit my target of 60. Well, I, I think the target's 50 grams. So I ate, actually no, it's 40 grams. So I ate 63.7 grams of fiber. And I will do that after race day, just to make sure that it helps when it comes to my bowel health. Fats, I ate a little bit more, but in particular, I ate a lot more omega-3s. So omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Pro, pro so if you're eating too many omega-6s, you're going to be more inflamed. Eating omega-3s, as I mentioned before, is great for your heart health, brain health, and it's just really important to have when it comes to improving your longevity. For protein, as I mentioned, I pit way over the target. So it's in I ate 243% over the target. I hit every target needed. And in particular, I think it's cysteine and leucine are the two areas that tend to be quite hard to eat supposedly for people who eat a plant-based diet. As you can see that, that was very comfortable for me to do. Then I'm going to switch across to the minerals. I hit all the minerals. So the calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, potassium, selenium, sodium, and zinc very, very comfortably. In particular with the selenium, that's where I had the Brazil nuts, so just have one of them a day is a really easy way to make sure you get enough selenium. In particular in New Zealand, we don't have that, the quality of the, um, the dirt isn't uh, selenium rich, so making sure you are eating something if you are in New Zealand would be really important to do. When it comes to the vitamins, hit all the targets apart from one, which is choline. Now, choline is a bit of a controversial one. Some people say you have to hit it. Some people say you don't. I had a chat with my doctor. My doctor said it was perfectly fine for me to kind of do what I'm doing now. I'm getting some and we've checked my bloods and I am perfectly healthy. So it's whether you're in the camp or not when it comes to choline. Usually it's more animal based. Advocates will suggest Yes, and more of the plant-based advocates say it's actually not that important. So it all depends on what you dictate, what you find is important for you. So that is pretty much what I eat on a day-to-day -day basis. And I use this pretty much once every couple of weeks just to ensure that I am hitting the targets that I need to be healthy. When I first began, I pretty much used this on a daily basis, but occasionally now I'll just go on just to make sure that I am hitting one or two things. And when it, as, as it comes to race day, I will tweak one or two things just to make sure that I am feeling comfortable on that starting line and not having to worry about any unnecessary accidents, let's just say. So that is it. That is the end of the video. So if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Drop a comment below and I will do my best to respond to that. Um, if you look on my description, there is also my social media pages where I post daily. So you can reach out on there and my email if you have something a bit more personal. Um, however, apart from that, if you like this video, obviously like it, subscribe, share it to as many people as you can. And my next video will be kind of a post race, like r breakdown of the training of how I felt, and what things I need to potentially improve for my next training cycle. So wish me luck. And until then, look after yourselves, take care, and I'll see you soon.